sweet sound. You
a really simple thing to say um, just referencing back to my sermon back about how great God is we were singing he is the king yes. and his presence is so thick here I just want to say don't let it pass you by don't miss this opportunity he's the, he created it all all and he's right here with us like that should humble you like how amazing is that that we get to be in his presence don't let this moment pass you by without entering in and giving him everything
Hear that sweet sound. Hear that sweet sound. Release, ah. release. You are my king. Release. Ah. Ah. Let his presence wash over you. Sing a new song. Sing a new song.
Pastor Tim comes at and sitting here for five minutes and wrestling with this thing. But I think it might be just all right to take a minute for a teachable moment. Is that all right? Usually a song service will be a song service. There'll be four or five songs and we'll sing those and that'll be the song service. But today, something different happened. There was a different sensing in the minstrels. And they gave us a place to offer up something of ourselves. Scripture says, I will enter your gates with thanksgiving in my heart. And I will enter your courts with praise. Where does the king sit? The king sits in his court. He didn't say, I will enter your court with a song. No. A song is something that's written on the overhead and we all sing it together and it's very lovely sometimes. But praise is something different. I will enter your courts with praise. That's not a song on the overhead. That's what generates from inside and comes out. Scripture says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. If you love the Lord, and if there's something in your heart that is tied to him, then that will come up and out. We had a period where you could hear several different things going on, several different tunes, several different words. The Bible likens it to the sound of many waters. And that's what life is. There's life in the water. And, and the worship team was sensitive enough just to play that and allow uh, this is just an educational moment because there's some in here that are new and unaware of the concept of entering the court with praise that's something that's willingly offered up here's the kicker the word says he inhabits the praises of his people what does that mean that means if you all could find it in yourself to release yourself from the prison of yourself and open your mouth. Bible doesn't say open your mouth and tell them what you want. He says open your mouth and I'll fill it. Just be willing to open your mouth and release to God. And whatever is inside your heart will come forth. And that's what God wants. He wants to inhabit the praises of his people. Some of us can't even imagine what would happen if the presence of God really entered this room. I have seen firsthand people lose control of themselves, really. And that's what God's after. He wants to release you. To release to Him the thing that He is after. The adoration and praise. Amen. Then we went to this song, Let the Worshippers Arise. That's not a song, that's a call. If there's worship in your heart, arise. Let it come forth let it let it pour out let the sons and the daughters sing sing what peter was singing it sing a new song make a song up make up your own song 
That's what this that's what this portion of our gathering is all about. Is letting a people be released into the presence of God. And who knows what could happen. All right? Bud's right on. Because I got up this morning, and you know I've been sharing on Daniel. I don't go anyplace. And really wasn't sure where I, what I, was, where I was going. I asked the Lord, I sound like my dad. God, what are you saying to the people today? He's already been talking to y'all, whether you caught it or not. He's been all over the anointing. all over in Sunday school dealing with the anointing. And we can do nothing outside of Him. And it isn't the anointing on me, Brother Tim, and it ain't the anointing on you. It's anointing on us. God came in here today to change some of our mindsets. The anointing will break every yoke, every hindrance, solve every one of your problems that you think you have, deal with every situation in your life. He will bring healing through His anointing. He will do everything His Word declares through His anointing. Because we know that His anointing is Jesus. It's the Christ. It's Christ in you, in and amongst us all, which is our hope, our expectation that His Word will fulfill, is that not what you said? Every word He declared. God has given every single one of you no matter where you're at in, his, in your walk, in your individual walk, doesn't matter where you're at, God has given you opportunity today. Brother Bud, just, he just witnessed in my spirit that this is what God's saying. This is a good day. Isn't that right, Brother Steve? Isn't that what you tell, always say? It's a good day. Right? But what's, what's the other thing? It's a better, better thing. God's got something better. Better than where you're at right now. God has something better. I'm telling you. God is the answer. His anointing is the answer for everything that you can think of. His anointing will take the shackles off even the ones that you put on yourself. Oh. oh. If you allow him. Isn't that what you said, Brother Bud? If you open yourself up. There it is. God is in the one thing and one thing only. Himself. Oh, Brother Tim, that sounds like a psychopath or something. No, because God sees better than what we all see. And see, His anointing will bring that revelation to each and every one of us. That anointing will get our minds set on things above. That anointing will purify our speech. It will purify our walk. That we will be the worshipers because the worshiper that lives within, which is the anointing, He will arise, He will shine, and He will flow in your everyday walk. He will take care of every problem you have, no matter where you go, if you allow Him to rise and shine. Well, Brother Tim, well, how do you do that? Just release yourself. 
Because I just got done telling you that the anointing will break every yoke, every hindrance. So if you have a hindrance in your life, allow them to break it. Doesn't matter what it is. Look, we would talk about those three Hebrew children. We, we, we think that, uh, that they were something special, right? They weren't something special. You know what they were? They were people that walked in the anointing of God. They wouldn't defile themselves. They wouldn't do anything outside to defile or defame the name of God. They wouldn't live a different lifestyle than what they were taught in their home, in the church, where they live, not in the church in general, because we know the church in general was in a mess. And we know the world was in a mess. But God said that he picked out the people. That where he would be, that's it, brother Bud. It'd be crazy praise. When he comes in and allows the anointing to break yokes and hindrance in your life, to take the poo-poo out of your life, don't tell me you're not going to be praising him. Tim always says, the anointing flows where? From the head. Where's the head? It's Christ. It's Jesus. He is the head. And it flows all the way down. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? She had an issue. She was bleeding out. From where? Blood. They talk about blood. Blood is what? It's the life source. She was bleeding from the life source. Out everything. But all she had to do, she knew she had a determination within her spirit. If all she could do is just touch the hem. Oh, just the lowliest person in the church. If I could just get a hold of them because they are as he is. Come on now. See, we all want the pastor to do it, the brother elder to do it, the brother deacon to do it, the sister so-and-so, and the whatever. We want Jesus to come and do it. Did. And the way he's doing it is by his anointing in a people. He touches you so you can go into your world, as Pastor Dale used to say, you can go into where you live in your home, be able to touch your grandchildren, your children, your husband. You'll be able to prophesy and speak the word of the Lord because of the anointing. Not, not our wishful thinking, not our want to do it, get it done, whatever. It will speak the word. We won't hesitate when God says, hey, you need to follow all the steps that I put before you. You need to walk in this way. We'll not hinder. We'll not look to the right or to the left. We'll say, yes, Lord. The anointing will make you say, yes, Lord, because you know that in the anointing, it will take every care of every situation that you think you have. You think sometimes not only you grow, but you think sometimes that the pressure is more than what God can handle. I'm telling you, God is bigger than the pressure because the pressure is in Him. Trying to break out. God does not work. I said it in Sunday school. He does not work from out here to come inside of here or inside of here. Or, oh yeah, even you, bro, you didn't just show up by happenstance. 
because the anointing can break every yoke, every hindrance, take care of all the discontents, all the issues that you might have had and all you're bringing up. God can take care of every bit of that in an instant. All he's waiting for us to say is yes, Lord. He brings us into the waters of baptism and he cuts us off from the old nature. So now he no longer deals with us as the Adam man. Now he deals with us from the new creation man. Whoa, that's pretty, that's jacked up. See, G Jesus always jacked it up, didn't he, Uncle Danny? Jesus always jacks it up. And guess what? Just because you might say no, Lord, along your way, you think Jesus gives up. Jesus never gives up. Oh, yeah, that's why we have a prodigal list up here. See, the word says, John said this. John said that he's going to come and do what? Baptize you with the Holy Ghost in fire. Every single one of you. I've been saying it for how long? You have a deposit of God in you. You've got to express it. Oh, Brother Tim, how do I express it? You allow the anointing to break every yoke, every mindset, everything that tries to block what God wants to do in your life. He doesn't care about your past. He's your new beginning. What do you, what, do you really think God cares about your past when he gives you a whole brand new life come on now we're so stuck in our past and God is trying to clear the vision so you can see the brand new life come on now this is what the anointing does it isn't what Brother Tim does. The anointing does it. Norman, you got so much garbage going on in your life, and you think, oh, God, this will never happen. Isn't it amazing that it's up to us, not me, it's up to you, whether you want to release. I see you back there. Yeah, you. God knows. See, the thing is, we come in here. I'm not getting on anybody's case. Come on now. This is what the anointing does. You know, this is how the anointing flows. This is how it flows in the house. Because he started out this morning. And he said, my anointing is going to come in and break some yokes today. And then she got up, right? Did you not get up, Colleen? And say, oh, geez, God's given us an opportunity. And now he's looking, oh, and then Brother Bud got up and he witnessed the opportunity. And he said, hey, and God's still sitting and he's examining. He's looking. He already knows. And he's just waiting. I'm in no hurry. You know why I'm in no hurry? Because God's in no hurry. Every yoke, every hand, every mindset, everything that you thought, God's going to bring it, make it clear. Not that he doesn't want it from everybody else. He wants it from you, Tom. God wants, come on now. 
See, we'll come and we'll say, yeah, we want all of you, God. Well, what do you think he wants? Pastor. God wants every bit of you. And the only way that you can allow yourself to give your all is allow the anointing to come in and break everything in your life. Pastor Tim, yep. I just see in the spirit that Brother Bud and uh, Pastor Tim this morning, that they have heard from the Lord. And what they actually have done is that they have drawn a line in the sand we can either and like he said he's like we can either have the same mindset over and over again that's what jesus did right when he drew that line in the sand he was showing them a different mindset and that's what brother bud and pastor tim have done this morning they they drew a line in the sand it is and the, the crazy thing about it is we didn't sing the first verse of Let the Worshippers Ride. And I'm, I'm just going to read the words, but it says, Father, I see that you are drawing a line in the sand. And I want to be standing by your side, holding your hand. So let your kingdom come. Let it live in me. This is my song. This is my plea. And this is exactly what both of them are saying to you this morning. Or to us. To us. There's a line in the sand. There is. There's a line in Look. That's it, Brother Bud. The call is to come. God never leaves you where you're at. He always has, come on now, something better. I mean, something better. I mean, who wouldn't want something better? Come on now. Who wouldn't want something better? There's, well, we know there's nothing better, even if we think there's something better, because we fill our lives with what we think is better. But really, who wouldn't want something better? And he's available. God's available right now, right here, today. Not yesterday, even though he was there yesterday. And you know what? He'll be there tomorrow. But today. Today. Today he has put an anointing on the house that would come in and whosoever will wants to come and allow him to break every yoke, every hindrance. If you can think it, what God can do, he can do it by his anointing. You need to be set free? Come. God will set you free. You need healing? God can heal you. The biggest thing is we always think it's going to be a certain way. Allow the anointing to do it his way. Because God sees further down the road than how we see. The anointed one in the believer is the prophet. Come on now. Everybody wants a word. Everybody wants a prophetic word. Get your Bible out. He'll prophesy to you. If you ask the Lord, God, give me an ear to hear. The Lord says, the word says that he gives the hearing ear. Sit before the Lord, be still, wait on the Lord, He'll answer you. Allow the anointing to clear the clutter in the head so you can hear what God has to say. The prophets declares God unto men, first to you and then those that are in, like Pastor Dale you said, your word. He's also the priest, right? We already dealt with that. Where's the anointing start? On the head. He's the high priest. And it flows all the way down. And that brings men 
unto God. What's the priest do? They open the door. Not the man, the anointing opens the door. And he's king. You know what the king does? The king does what the song said. The king will bring kingship into your life that you worship will live your life unto the king. No other life. Christ's life. The king's life. And the anointing will flow in you as you flow in the anointing. The anointing will not violate God's word. The anointing won't do anything outside of the kingdom. The anointing. It is Christ in you. Your expectation. Your hope. Your glory. She's got the right idea. And the truth of the matter is, Christ's life fellowship, we've been a long time since we've come to an altar. And all an altar is, is because the church has made it a poo-poo thing. An altar is a good place. You know what an altar is? An altar is a place where you can allow the anointing to break the yokes and the hindrances in your life. Isn't that pretty cool? Isn't it amazing how God does things? And as the new churches and as churches go around, they get rid of an altar and they get a stage. Because it's not by performance. It's not going to be man-centered. It's going to be God-centered. It's going to be Christ-centered. There's not a thing you'll be able to do outside of God because you can do nothing unless God be working in you. You know what God will do? You know what the anointing will do? The anointing will break fears. You got a fear? The anointing will take care of it. Come on now. I dare you to challenge God in something that you think that he can't handle. As we watch everybody else go do whatever they do, the anointing has a fix to fix the problem. And Colleen said it. Don't miss your opportunity. Don't miss your opportunity. Look, I know, that, I know we're going to honor my mom today. It's her, you know, for the birthday and all that. But you know what? You know what the Bible says? The Bible says give honor to where honor is due. Well, what greater honor than you could do than that you honor God? There is no greater honor. Because in honoring Him, God will have it where those that honor Him will be honored of one another. Isn't that pretty cool? There it is, Brother Bud. Hey, I'm not trying to get you to do anything you don't want to do. I'm just saying. The anointing's here. Amen. I just witnessed what they all said from what I felt the Lord put on my heart this morning dealing with the anointing. say I don't want to do this and the Lord says yes you're going to go do this <laughs> um, and I really don't want to do this but I'm going to do it Andrew I have a word for you and you know it, it, Stephen and Ed go ahead and get by him but I heard go, just, go, just go ahead and get by him today because I heard the Lord I heard the Lord for you I heard the Lord for you so much that I was touched by it. And the Lord said, we were cleaning the church yesterday morning, and the Lord said, I detail. And I said, what? And he said, I detail, Andrew. 
God says to you, I detail. As passionate as you are about cleaning cars, God is that much more passionate about cleaning hearts. And he wants you to know today that I detail, says the Lord your God. And he says, son, I detail, I detail. And I want to detail every part of your heart. I want to detail it so you know exactly what to do and when to do it. Because my anointing, I want it to rise up within you. You have a passion and you want to, you want to reach others. Let me help you, says the Lord. Let me help you. And he, I just, I heard him clear as day. He said, I detail, Andrew. I detail. And you know what? As, as I was hearing this today, I was hearing it for Andrew. But then we opened up this whole thing. And the Lord says to the people in this house today, I detail. There it is. I go into every crevice of your heart. If you allow me to, I will never make you do anything you don't want to do. I will never force myself on you, ever. But if you allow me to, I will detail your heart. I will clean out every crevice. I will make it so pure. I will make it so clean. So clean. You'll be able to shine before all men because my presence will radiate from you. And people will be drawn to you by my spirit. Listen, Christ Life Fellowship, he longs for this for us. He longs for this for his glory and for his honor to detail our hearts so that they become exactly what he made them to be. And Sarah, even for you this morning, he says, I detail, I detail. I detail, I detail every portion of your heart, if you'll let me. I love you. I love you, daughter. I love you. I love you. And there's nothing more than I want than you in my courts, than you a part of my kingdom. You're worthy. You're worthy because he makes you worthy. There it is. God, I just pray over Sarah right now, Lord God. Lord God, I just ask that that you would just come. You are. You're coming. Lord, we believe it. You're coming in a new way in her life, Lord God, right now. Lord, the presence, you're here. You're here. You're right here right now, Lord God. You're right here right now, Lord God. Let her love, let the love, the love that you have for her just pour from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. Let her fall in love, Lord God, with the king who wants her more than anything, Lord God. More than anything. Sarah, don't let your mind get in the way. We all do that. Don't let your mind get in the way. Don't let every circumstance stop you. Because the king is here. The king is here. The king is here. He's the only thing that matters. And it's all okay. It's all okay. I just see the Lord right now. Just believe, just believe. You know, we hear these words, and this is exactly what Brother was talking about. Pray in the Spirit. Just pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Pray for Sarah right now, because I see the Lord. I see the Lord. He's entering into the crevices of her heart, the places that you have hardened. Daughter, I long to get in there. I'm going to get in there, and it's going to be like, your heart's going to become like clay on the potter's wheel. And you're going to understand, and there's going to be things, and they're going to, they're going to be gone. These things, all these things, all these things that, that want to stop you, they're going to be gone. And I believe this, and I speak this over your life even now, Sarah, because we serve a good God. And if we could even understand how much he loves us. <laughs> could we even understand how much he loves us? There's one more person that I that has really, really been on my heart, and 
I don't know. Can someone go get Gabby? Is she out here? But church, don't stop. Like, don't stop. Don't stop. Don't like, stop. Just pray in the spirit. If there's, let it stir up within you. Because the Lord says today over Christ Life Fellowship, he says, I detail. I detail the hearts of men. Don't shut down, folks. Don't shut down. I detail. Lord, you Don't detail. Lord, detail our hearts today, Lord God. Just let him in. Let him in. Just let him in. Let him in. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The altar's open. We... We have to be free in here today. If you want to walk around and pray, walk around and pray. If you want to go to the altar, go to the altar. If you want to pray for the person next to you, pray for the person next to you. Gabby, I just, I can relate with you on so many levels. Really, really, I can. And I feel like the Lord is telling you to let go of the past. Things that happened in the past, things that hurt really bad, things that you didn't understand, things that just, don't let anything keep your heart hard because God wants to use you in this new season. He wants to use you in this house and he wants to use you as part of your family. He wants to make you a peacekeeper in the midst of everything. And the Lord just says, I'm gonna fill every void. Whatever it is, whatever it is in your heart, th just things that bother you, things that, that might wanna take you away from what God wants you to say. In your moments of frustration, in your moments where you feel hurt, in your moments where you think of the past, just give all those things to the Lord because he wants to use you today he wants to use you he wants to use you for his kingdom and it's not just for Seamus <laughs> you guys are a marvelous couple a marvelous couple a God put together couple but I what I really hear for the Lord to, for you today is any hurt, anything from the past that causes you to move forward, just let it go today. Just let it go, whatever it is. hoping that you were going to come into the room and apparently you had other things to do. I just want to show you something. It's okay, she can hear me. What God has revealed to me is there's so many people that have come and gone throughout the day, throughout the years. For whatever reason, when they come back, it's because of something. I see you're different when you came back this time. And if I can see it, and God revealed it to me, that shows me that God is pulling on your heartstrings to draw you forward to Him. The days of you jumping from one place to another place to another place because those steps are so far ahead and you can't get any footing behind it, the Lord is saying He's putting one step in front of the other, in front of the other, that your steps will now become easier and more directive and more straight. So I'm going to do something. I want you to think about all of those things that in the past that have brought you discomfort, pain, anything that it is. And I want you to open up your hands like a cup. It's all right there. See this? That's a garbage disposal. If you're willing to step forward and release all of that trash God is going to open the doors in your life and you're going to be unbelievably 
cannot fathom the blessings that he has for you. So what do you want to do with the trash? As her words leave her lips, Lord, I ask in Jesus' name, Lord, right now, Lord, that because the release is there, Lord, you're going to fill and fill and fill. Let the word release be spoken over in her life, God. Let all these things, Lord, the distractions, the cares of life, and all these things, Lord, have been a hindrance in the past, God. They are no longer a hindrance anymore. This is a new day. Mark the calendar. This is a new day. Fast forward. And the very things that I'm about to do in your life will become so prevalent and so obvious. You're going to look behind you and say, how can this possibly be happening to me? It's because because you're my daughter it's because of the anointing upon your life you think you're staying in the back row for a long time know this that I'm bringing you to a place that I'm going to move you forward in things that you had no idea you even had a deposit in you you're going to be not even understanding those things but because of the release because of the trash release you have today I now have a place to put something in. I could never put anything in there before because it was always something in the way. When something's full, something's full. Something has to be emptied in order for something to be replenished. So the word of the Lord over your life is I am replenishing you with joy. I am replenishing you with healing. I am replenishing you with fresh understanding and fresh direction. But even your countenance is going to change. Even your co-workers are going to say, there's something different about you. It's just because you released the trash and gave me some place to put joy and peace and understanding and longevity and all of the fruits of the spirits will be upon your shoulders. But know this, the days of you staying in the back row are coming to an end because I'm about to move you forward, even as a single individual, and even as the future moves forward, the other doors that I'm gonna open up for you. But know this, when you came back this time, you were different. There was something different about you. It was age immaturity, yes, but there was something in your heart that said, yes, Lord. So release and replenish is the word of the Lord over your life. Replenish, replenish, and joy will be your portion. Anybody else? standing in front of anybody and speaking but as I'm standing here and listening to all the prayers and the anointing I'm talking about the value and growing up I had a lot of bad things happen to me I won't get into details but I had no value of myself I didn't even know what that word was okay until Jesus entered my life and he taught me what value was and there is nobody out there that is too good for me anymore, okay? Because I am his daughter. And so it doesn't matter whatever happened in my past, what I did or what's been done to me. I have value now. I look at myself as the daughter of the high king, okay? Because I know my identity. There is nothing, there is nothing anybody can say or do that can take that away from me because I know that I am the daughter of the high king and so whoever has no value in yourself Jesus looks at you and you are worthy of all things okay because I never look at myself in a mirror as if I don't I'm not good enough anymore and Jesus just loves me just for who I am and that's, that's it
his word declares that he came and healed the brokenhearted. Right? And don't tell me. Don't tell me. Look, don't tell me. We all have little areas. And the anointing is here to break it. I'm telling you, he started the morning out with the anointing. And he's going to finish the day out with the anointing. Key to YouTube? 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 See, you're not going to get it on your own. Every husband and wife, the key, Steve and Jennifer, the two of you. Ronnie and Monica, the two of you. David and Kathy, the two of you. Don and Pete, the two of you. Corrine and Jason, the two of you. Ron and Kelly, the two of you. Ron and Chris, the two of you. Because you know the word declares that a house defi divided is going to do what? So tell me, does he want the two of you? Jennifer and Jeremy. Bud and Burn. And all the single people that think they don't have anybody with them, you got Jesus. In a house divided, not going to stand. I can go all down through every single one of these, even you young folk. Megan, Josiah, all the rest of you. Eliana, Rachel, Sage. What goes on in here is important. It's life source. He sees you back there, Matt. God's going to continue to work on you. All he's waiting for is a people to respond. Colleen, you and Stephen together. It's not going to be any other way. That's a good thing. It brings safety. That's why he uses in the words, he says, husband, right? You and your wives, you submit to one another. You do it together. In the body, you submit one to another. There's safety in that because the anointing on all of us. I'm telling you, God's here to do some big things in the house if the house wants God to do big things. Don't let your minds go thinking outside of God. Keep your mind inside of God on what the big things are. You know what the biggest thing is? He's going to produce his life in you. So, oh yeah, like the song we sang, that the worshipers would arise. Your lifestyle, your character will be just like his. Right, John Luke? He didn't pick you by no reason. There's not a person in this room that God didn't know was going to be here today. And I'm not trying to get your emotions going. I want you to get serious with God. Whether you be an old folk or a young folk. Whether you've been serving the Lord all your life or haven't been serving the Lord at all. Or could care less who the Lord is. God's here today in a fresh way because that's how God's anointing is and he'll deal with everything in your life if you allow him to God I pray he deals with all my stuff because I got lots of hang ups that have not been hung up yet and I just cleaned out my closet so I have lots of room to put them all in there 
And isn't it amazing that the place I gave all the old stuff to was called Heart Spring? God wants to spring up out of your heart something brand new. Luke, God gave you a talent. He gave you gifts. He's put an anointing on you. Same with you, Peter. Not just to sit up here and do, 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 do. It's greater than that. That is part of it. But that's not all of it. Same with you, Leah. He didn't say yes, Lord, through you, just for you to be the person that everybody say, Leah, what's the Lord saying? There's more to it than that. Yes is a very deep word. us so much as a people as I come on Christ like fellowship God loves you so much that he's willing to come in and have these days on occasion where he wants he wants to gather you all together take all your cares cast them all on him and he wants to come in he wants to move he wants to allow his anointing to come in and just refresh you a fresh brand new today not like he's ever done in the past even though he's done it in the past isn't it cool how God does that? He does, he does it like he's never done it before, but then he, he's already done it all before. That's pretty cool. He's going to take care of all the issues. I'm telling you. Whether we lie, rely on him. You. You know what you got to do? You don't want to hear it, maybe. Or maybe you do want to hear it. But you got to speak the word. Coming in, going out. All the rest of the garbage that we think is important, speak the word. Let the word do the work. Not only in you, but in serving your children. You're not going to make him do anything he doesn't want to do, but the Holy Ghost can change the mind. The Holy Ghost can change the... It was on the list. You heard me say it change my mind. That's it, brother bud. You can't argue with truth. Every husband in here is the key to their family. You have the responsibility. God gave you the opportunity. Now you need to take it. You need to take the responsibility. You need to march on God's word. You speak it to your family, at the dinner table, at night, whenever it is. That's what it is. The word you said it. It's by the washing of the water of the word. The word is the only thing that's going to clean the dirt out of your house. There's not one other thing. You can go and you can get Mr. Clean and all of that stuff. It's not going to get clean like the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Anybody else want prayer? Before we celebrate? Because today is a good day. We're going to go. Today is a good day. You need prayer? Get up here. Come on now. Where's all the prayer warriors in the house? Come on. Get on the altar. You know me, I'll throw you on the altar. Hey, he had to do it to me. If it was good enough for me, it's good enough for the rest of us. All right? Father, in the name of Jesus. God, you know every situation, every circumstance. You ain't even hooked. You ain't even worried, God, about the past. You ain't even worried about the present. What you want is a release. Norman, you're gonna to have to release. How do I release? You just gotta do it his way. All you gotta do is say yes, Lord. Every time some other voice comes into your head trying to tell you something else to do, you just say, oh, no, yes, Lord. I'm gonna do it your way, Lord. And he can restore. Because 
God is. His word. He is. Jesus is the restorer of the breach. And every breach you've ever breached, God can repair. He can bring the family about. He can bring it whole. You're the key, though. God to deal in your heart, the faster the thing, the process goes. Do you have to want it? Do you want it? Then you need to tell him. got something real simple for you, okay? Um, no great big word, but what the sister said earlier, right? We all have past. We all think of a certain way of ourselves. And um, it's not that now that we're with God that's different. See, we are all on borrowed time here. We live in an earth, we're, we're living in earthen vessels. It's not about time. It's not what you were before. It's before time, God. We're in God. So here's what I, I believe. The only reason I got up off my chair, the Lord wants you to know this one thing, because I don't really know anything else. But there are people that pray for you every single day, because it's going to take a miracle. Okay? 
but there are people that pray for you every single day and the only reason that is is because God wants you he doesn't throw people away don't call unclean what God has called clean you're on people's hearts and they pray for you you need to know that whatever it is you're going through Norman, what are you going to do with all this? You don't know, right? Go home, open up the book of Proverbs. Okay? Proverbs will show you what you were, but what you should become. I've been reading the book of Proverbs, and I've noticed some things in myself in that book that wasn't lined up with the Lord. And that's and the reason why it's there is to teach men and women how to live a godly life. So you need to learn how to live a godly life. So in the morning when you get up, read a chapter of Proverbs to a day. And then, because in the first verse it says, if you want wisdom, then you'll get wisdom. wants to come do a new thing I'm telling you somebody read that scripture oh yeah I think brother Barry did on Isaiah chapter 43 it's about to do a new thing get ready get ready get ready can't say anything else get ready get ready showed me two things. One is that he asked that question, can man by taking thought add one cubit to his stature? The answer is no. But by taking thought, when we have negative thoughts, it can keep us down. It can knock us down. It can take away from it can like decrease cubits in how we think about ourselves. And when Susan came up here and talked about how God gave her that security and she no longer thinks of herself as this, it's because she's no longer taking those thoughts. And then one more thing. Um, for any of us that have ever laid anything on the altar, the cool thing about the altar is that when you give it to God and he burns it up, there is nothing left to it. You cannot pick up the ashes. You cannot pick it up again and put it back together because it's no longer there. See, now that's a good word. That's a good word. That's the beauty of the altar. You bring the sacrifice, you put it there, and it's all burned up. Amen? Are we good? It's a good day. It's a good day. 
Well, Father, I just bless you and magnify your name, God. Thank you for your people, Father. Thank you for your anointing, God. Thank you for the anointing that you put on the house, Father. God, that there is a free flow of your presence in the house today, Father. Pray that it'd be full release, Father. Even the ones, Father, where you see that maybe little heels in the mud, Father, keep working. Just like you did with the prodigal. You kept working. Because your word is sure. Father, we just bless you. We want to magnify you, Father. It is a good day. It is your day, Father. And you work mightily in the midst of your people, Father. We just want to tell you we love you. We bless you, Father. You know we're going to go out here and we're going to have fellowship, Father. We pray that you would even sanctify the food. That there would be that, exactly that. The consecration, that sanctification. Just like what the anointing does, how it separates that God, that you would be the most in the midst. That you would be even the host in the midst, Father. That your ever presence, Father, would overshadow this house, Father. God, as we speak and as we fellowship, God, that you, Father, would be the bread and the wine, God, is that we eat, that we would sharpen one another, oh God, that your anointing would flow, Father, and that there would be a sweet, sweet aroma, Father, from the fellowship, Father. God, we just want to tell you again, we love you, we bless you. You do all things well, Father. You do all things well. Pray for everyone in the house, Father, that you would go beyond, Father, that every word that you ever spoke into their lives, every word that you just spoke, Father, that it would come to pass, Father. Go beyond, Lord. Go beyond. We bless you. We magnify your name, God. Let a people of great joy say amen. Amen. Amen? All right.